If you're new to my channel, I made some wildly successful IndyCar crash videos that you can find on my channel, and it was highly requested I make a NASCAR one. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to look at 10 brutal NASCAR crashes throughout the years. These were just 10 that I handpicked, and there was no fatalities in any of the accidents. These are also in no particular order, and if there's ones that I did not feature in this video that you'd like to see in the next one, let me know in the comments below. With that being said, let's get right into number 10. Dale Earnhardt was leading the 1996 Die Hard 500 at Talladega Super Speedway when Ernie Irvin, who was running behind him in the third spot, made contact with Sterling Marlin, who was to Dale's outside, trying to go for the lead. This right hooked Dale Earnhardt's car into the outside wall at nearly 200 miles an hour in one of the most vicious impacts to a concrete wall I've ever seen. Oh, got trouble! Terrible crash! The field all torn up. Earnhardt's car destroyed. A major crash. Well, you can see Earnhardt is leading. Ernie Urban trying to pass the four car of Sterling Marlin. Touches him. Shoots the left front of Marlin's car down into Earnhardt. Earnhardt into the wall. And then, since they were at the front of the pack, lots of other cars came along and got involved. Earnhardt rolling over in that incident. Another angle. Boy, as close as you can see, Earnhardt's car gets upside down, gets hit there by, Bo Ro uh, by a uh, Robert Presley. Uh, Robert Presley in the 33 got into Earnhardt when he was upside down there. But Cope was the first one, got him in the roof. Derek Cope in that 12 tangled with him as well as it was spinning and crashing from the in-car camera of Dale Earnhardt at 190 miles per hour approaching turn one. Sterling Marlin's pictures of this incident. Sterling okay after that one. Dale Earnhardt has at least a broken collarbone. Another look. Well, you can see the 28 and the four car touch and the four car gets into the right rear of Earnhardt, shoots him right straight into the wall. Earnhardt's car gets on its roof, gets hit first by Derek Cope, and then the car 33 of Robert Presley comes along and hits him as well. And lots of other cars get involved simply nowhere to go when you got that many cars running at that speed that was the fastest part of the racetrack when they came just past the start finish line well there's going to be some big damage and there certainly was it's amazing to see Dale Earnhardt get out of this car. He had a little help from the safety team, but he did have a broken collarbone as they pretty much knew that right away. And he also had a broken sternum. Dale Earnhardt was trying to win his eighth championship and was second in the points when this accident happened. The following race at Indianapolis, he would start, but after only five laps, he would get out and Mike Skinner would finish the race for him. But the very next week at Watkins Glen, Dale Earnhardt would go out in qualifying and set a new track record and get the pole position once again he had a relief driver standing by but Earnhardt would not exit the car and would come home with a sixth place finish and after that race in Watkins Glen Dale Earnhardt would compete in every single one without getting out of the car for a relief driver another thing that came about from this accident is due to the impact when the car was upside down right on the driver's windshield NASCAR mandated a new bar be in place which is called the Earnhardt bar you could see it right here in this onboard shot and it was a huge step for safety in the sport practice for the 2003 Pontiac Excitement 400 at Richmond International Raceway saw career ending accident for driver Jerry Nadeau. It's pretty wild because the accident does not look that bad, but the car hit at a complete flush angle to the outside wall and Jerry would suffer substantial injuries. 
He was airlifted to the local hospital as he was in critical condition. Doctors were giving him only a 6% chance of surviving his injuries as he suffered a skull fracture, concussion, collapsed lung, several broken ribs, and he lost complete immobility of the left side of his body. He also needed a ventilator to breathe. He was in a coma and when he awoke from that, he had to learn how to walk again. The impact was recorded at 128 G's, which was the highest since NASCAR implemented black boxes after the death of Dale Earnhardt. Jerry would try to make a comeback, but it just wasn't feasible. But he would remain in the sport as he would do some spotter work as well as a driver mentor for guys like David Gilliland and Jeffrey Earnhardt. The 2020 Daytona 500 saw a brutal accident right at the start finish line at the conclusion of the race. Ryan Newman was trying to hold off Ryan Blaney for the win while well, he was turned into the outside wall, flipping upside down and being hit while he was in the air by Corey LaJoy. Here comes Hamlin up the outside, wow. crash into the wall, into the air goes up. Newman. Upside down. In a shower of sparks on his roof. Ryan Newman comes across the line, fourth, and comes to rest. Newman gets a pretty good run to the turn four, but now here comes a huge run by Ryan Blaney being pushed by Denny Hamlin. He goes, tries to go to the outside, then the inside. They lock, lock bumpers and turns Ryan Newman around. Upside down he goes. Corey LaJoy coming along, making contact. And just lifting Newman's car up and over. Blaney tried the top side, tried to get low. Ryan Newman goes around, and the car goes to its roof, and here's the on-rushing Corey LaJoy picking it up and over. Newman would get hit right in the driver's side window while he was upside down, knocking him unconscious. It was a pretty scary sight at the racetrack as I actually attended this race and nobody really knew what was going on. They kind of cut off the PAs. I took this picture right here from my seat, as you can see, kind of the aftermath after they took Ryan out of the car, but nobody actually knew if he was okay or not. It wasn't until the next day when I myself and as well as everyone else found out that Ryan did not suffer any extremely serious serious injuries and he was able to walk out of the hospital the next day. He had no broken bones but he did receive a head injury where he revealed that he had bruising on his brain and obviously a concussion. The 2020 season was a weird one and there was a pause due to the COVID-19 pandemic so he only missed the three races for the West Coast swing and would return the fifth race of the year, the first race back from COVID at Darlington on May 17th, 2020 of that year. Similar to Dale Earnhardt's case, they added a Newman bar to the race cars, which is an additional bar above the windshield near the roof in hopes of strengthening the cockpit and another step for safety. The most bizarre wreck on this list took place at the 1994 Winston Select 500 at Talladega Super Speedway. The big one would strike in the tri-oval and Mark Martin would, would get collected in the wreck. He would receive heavy front end damage that would result him losing the brakes in his car. He would go down the infield on a weird angle that almost followed the inside wall. As Talladega had an infield road course at this time, Mark plowed through a guardrail and then plowed through a chain link fence before hitting another guardrail and coming to rest in a spectator area. Mark got out of the car, he was shaken up, but he was uninjured. Here we see Todd Bodine, he's going to be involved now. Jeff Gordon comes down, they're going to get three abreast, and Todd Bodine doesn't know that. He gets touched by the 77 car of Sachs. He goes down, hits the 24 car. Sachs, the 8 car, spins, and look at all these cars behind. they got no place to go. Watch Mark Martin, he's hit someone, he has no brakes. Hits the inside retaining wall, and then he goes out of the picture, but he goes through another. We'll see it here. Now watch him. He hits the inside retaining wall. That's the car up in the middle of your screen. Hits the Die Hard 500 sign. Shoots through a guardrail right here. Goes right on through it. Mows it down. Still at top speed and hits another fence and then the guardrail and finally comes to rest. He had to be going 100 miles an hour when he hit the end of that guardrail and then went over to the second guardrail where he finally came to a stop. That was a wild ride, and thank wow. God he got out of there. Now, this ought to be a real shot. How did that camera 
to live Man. through all that. During qualifying for the 2008 Samsung 500 at Texas Motor Speedway, Michael McDowell, who was making only his second career NASCAR Cup Series start for Michael Waltrip Racing, got sideways going into turn number one and right hooked the car into the outside wall. Whoa, whoa, guys, whoa, whoa, oh no, oh my gosh. I have never seen anything like that in my life. He hit that wall a ton. Oh my gosh. Michael's moving around in the car. Let's take a look. I think you're going to see him get loose the minute oh, he yeah. turns down into the corner. Yeah, and he's just, man. And that thing just absolutely. I will guarantee you that impact was well over 180, probably 185 miles per hour. We've already seen 199 or better getting in there going straight. It's a part of the racetrack. Gosh. Oh, oh I, I, I can't even hardly watch that. It's a part of the racetrack, but Murray said was a little slick getting in. Good. Not knowing if Michael changed his line a little bit, got a little too much into that speedy drive. Oh, my Lord. But that he walked away and waited to the crowd while walking to the ambulance after that impact is a great testament to safety of these cars and these racetracks today. If there's been any fans, if there's been anybody in our industry that has questioned the car tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at this guy that walked out of that race car. As Mike Joy said, Michael McDowell was able to climb out of the race car with zero injuries, completely unharmed. This was definitely the first real big true test for the car tomorrow and the safety of it. And Michael McDowell was able to race on Sunday, although obviously being in a backup car. The 1997 Prime Star 500 at Atlanta Motor Speedway saw one of the most vicious rear impacts I've ever seen. Steve Grissom got turned around, backed his car into the wall, causing it to flip, completely detaching the fuel tank. The spilt fuel ended up getting ignited from Mike Wallace's car running over it and the hot exhaust. And it's definitely one of the craziest wrecks in NASCAR history and one that me personally, I was only seven years old when this happened and I remember it like yesterday. And we see him back at the very end of the screen right there makes right there is the white car and Spencer sideways and Steve Grissom trying to dodge Spencer just all of a sudden boom and look at the car go up in there is that that's the Mike Skinner car yep. Mike Skinner and Steve Grissom tried to dodge Skinner I mean the 23 car of Spencer and look there's the gas tank yes Hang on a second, I'll show you this gas tank, folks, as it goes across the racetrack. Right up there is yep. the gas tank. And it makes contact, it impacts the wall, and then splits open, and uh, the fire begins. I think other cars will go through there, and the exhaust is going to ignite. There we see that car, that's Mike Wallace's spam car, goes through the gasoline and ignites it as it goes through. And there is Kenny Wallace as he goes through also. May have made contact there with Grissom's car as it still has not stopped rolling or pirouetting. And the wall just, uh, and there is where Grissom made contact with that inside wall and it split it right in two in several places. Steve Grissom did not suffer any serious injuries in this accident and he was released from the infield care center only 45 minutes after. At the conclusion of the 2015 Coke 0400 at Daytona International Speedway, right as Dale Jr. crossed the line to win the race, the pack got into trouble behind him. The big one would trigger and Austin Dillon would get launched into the catch fence coming to a complete dead stop, flipping on the racetrack and then being struck again by Brad Keselowski. Dale Earnhardt Jr. to the bottom of the track! Jr. will win at Daytona! The three of Austin Dillon into the catch fence. All the crews getting out to that car to assist these drivers. Thumbs going up from all the crew members, and the crowd roars. 
Look at the catch fence on the front straight. Sight to see Austin Dillon walking away from that three car that is demolished. As you could see, Austin Dillon was completely uninjured in the impact, but unfortunately, five fans in the stands did get injured from the debris. But then the accident takes place behind him. Yeah, the 11 gets kind of stuck in the middle there and gets comes across the force bumper. As he does, he spins back in, gets the three airborne, and he just gets projected off the other cars right up into the fence. He went from the bottom of the racetrack over two rows of cars and into that catch fence. Here we go. You can see him on the bottom. Rex starts in front. He runs in the back of the 24, gets up on the 11. Now he's on top of the 54.5, and now it's just a long for the run. Watch the car stop. Watch the car stop. It gets into those poles, and it goes from, I don't know, what, 180, 190 miles an hour, I'm just guessing, to a complete stop. That is unbelievable. And that, it looks like a toy. That's 3,500 pounds. That, that stock car is extremely heavy. You see here, after he's upside down, the two is, is spinning. Obviously, he's already lost control, makes more contact with the three. Eleven and the four to get together. Here we are at the start finish line. It just pushes the three up into the air enough that it rolls over the top of the car. And then that momentum just continues to move him into the catch fence. Davey Allison had this extremely terrifying flip at Pocono Raceway for the 1992 Miller 500 after contact was made with Darrell Waltrip. His car flipped violently, flipping over the guardrail before finally coming to a rest on its roof. Davey was airlifted to the local hospital with severe concussion. He also broke his arm, wrist, and collarbone. He would start the next two races before getting out for a relief driver, as he needed to start the race as he was in the championship hunt, and by the third race after the accident, he would no longer need a relief driver. He also had this pretty famous interview that was kind of hilarious at Talladega the following week. I take these glasses off and kind of remind you of Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> but I promise you, it doesn't look like that from the inside. If y'all want to see it, I'll show them to you, but it's ugly. <laughs> We're heading back to Talladega Super Speedway in the year 1996 for the Winston 500, where the big one would strike on lap 130 and Ricky Craven would flip violently into the catch fence. A bad crash here at Talladega. Just a very, very bad crash. Mark Martin is involved. So is Rusty Wallace, Brett Bodine, Elton Sawyer. One car overturned in the banking of turn number one, got up into the catch fence and came back onto the racetrack. I don't know who it was at the moment, but this is a very, very ugly looking crash. Here it is again. Take a look. It's going to happen up front with uh, Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin running side by side. Okay, Martin goes a little high there. Gordon gets into him. They both have to back off, and then the jamming up starts, and they get into the wall on the outside. Others start jockeying around. There's Derek Cope. He thought he got through that for just a moment, but Mark Martin's going to come right back up in front of him. And is that Ricky Craven? Yes, it is. Ricky Craven in car number 41 that's flipping over, went up against the outside wheel fence back down on the track and was hit again. Yeah, he got hit again as the car was rolling toward the apron of the racetrack. Very reminiscent of Phil Parsons' crash a few years ago. Yes, then. it was. Okay, here they are. Gordon trying to go on the outside of Mark Martin. They make a little contact and it sort of shoots Martin out into the wall. Then Gordon comes up, gets tagged, and spins around. And Ricky Craven right in the middle of it. His car gets airborne. You can see it flipping up to the outside wall, just coming apart, and then is hit down on the inside by Elton Sawyer. It looks like the car number 27. You see 
just how fast it happens. Man. Ricky suffered two fractured vertebrae in his back, but would not miss any time behind the wheel. And this car is actually currently located inside the International Motorsports Hall of Fame that is located at Talladega Super Speedway, so if you want to see this car yourself, it's in there. The 1990 Budweiser 250 at Bristol Motor Speedway for the NASCAR Busch Series saw Michael Waltrip have arguably the most brutal NASCAR wreck of all time. He struck the outside wall which was a gate to get in and out of the racetrack and the gate opened which caused him to hit the end of the concrete wall head on essentially just split the car right in half. Looking at it right away, it's a miracle how anyone could survive this accident, but in fact, Michael would actually walk away with only some minor cuts and bruises, and it's truly a miracle that he survived this. To Michael Waltrip's car begins to slip and slide on the outside and contacts the concrete wall nearly head on. The car is sawed in half by that concrete barrier there. One of the most spectacular and violent crashes I have ever seen, Ned Jarrett. Jerry, I've been involved in auto racing for more than 30 years, and I don't remember ever seeing a car torn up this much. What's even more crazy is this wouldn't be the last wreck like this at Bristol Motor Speedway before changes were finally made to the track, but we'll save that accident for part two. And similar to Ricky Craven's car, you can also find this one at the International Motorsports Hall of Fame at Talladega Super Speedway. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much as always for tuning in. If this is your first time here and you like NASCAR and other motorsports related content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you you enjoyed it i appreciate the feedback i hope i could catch you guys in my next one take care everyone